And we're live. Thank you for joining Cinema Femme tonight for a special screening of Memories of Rain and our Q&A with the star Elliot Francis Flynn and the director Elizabeth Melling. Um, and I am the founder of Cinema Femme, the managing editor of Cinema Femme magazine and the festival director of the Cinema Femme Shorts Showcase. Um, I'm just really excited about, you know, this film and to talk to Elliot and Elizabeth tonight just because for so many reasons, but mainly because I feel that mental illness is just not portrayed on screen in a real way. And I love this film because of its unconventional real way that it brings mental illness to the screen. And I'm just, I'm really excited to talk to Elliot and Elizabeth about this. So uh, why don't you guys come up and we'll get started. Hey guys. Hey. <laughs> How you doing? Good. 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 Uh, so like I said um, in the intro there, I, I just love this film and I, I, Elliot, you, I love you in it. And Elizabeth, I just am so excited to see whatever you're going to be doing next because it's just, this was just like kind of genius to me. So, uh, <laughs> so I thought we could start with talking about how you two came to this project. Um, you know, Elizabeth, what, what made you think of it? And then Elliot, what brought you as acting in the film? So Elizabeth, why don't you start? So, sorry, there was like a Two second delay. Can you just repeat that question? I'm oh sorry. yeah, yeah. Thanks. Um, so my question is, how did you come to this project? Oh yeah. So I came to this project uh, pretty early, like around freshman year, because this was my senior film in college. And initially, I tried to think of it as this sort of abstract art collage piece. And then as I moved forward, I realized I wanted to do something more with mental illness. And then um, I believe the stop motion part, first of all, came out of the fact that um, I wanted to do something with stop motion because that was basically the first uh, cinematic language I learned to speak, as I like to say to people. Animation was the first uh, major interest I had with film. So I wanted to bring that back for my final project. And uh, I remember that my junior year, I had made a film that was an experimental digital collage, so to speak, and realizing, okay, I like the exploration between like the physicality of say VHS film and then combining that with digital elements. So then that kind of added to um, the sort of mishmash between the digital elements that you see in the film and then also just the physical stop motion and the collage elements. Um, so it was just a product of several years um, and it ended up being, uh, like I've said before, a complete 180 of what I originally set out to do, but it definitely mm -hmm. worked out for the better. Yeah, it's great. Elliot? Um, well, I had heard about the project and I, I knew Elizabeth because we had met in passing um, at a screening for another film that I had been a part of. Um, but I mean, I, I read the breakdown of the film and I read the character breakdown and I kind of like knew it was for me. Um, I knew it was something I was interested in. Um, I was very intrigued um, that the story was about a young queer woman without it being a story of her coming out or struggling with her sexuality. Um, and I just felt that I could breathe life into the character yeah. um, in a way that would service the story. And also, I mean, the animation portion seemed like a challenge to me. So I was all across the board interested. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, this is, you were great in it. I, 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 I yeah, Thank there's you. so much to talk about. Uh, <laughs> but I, something I wanted to ask uh, in terms of, um, you know, mental illness and how it's portrayed on screen. Um, Elizabeth, I, I really thought, you know, it was interesting how you brought, you know, stop motion animation and live action together in a story with the lens of this woman who's dealing with mental illness. Can you talk to me about bringing all these different aspects together to tell the story? 
Sure. So I remember specifically um, when I decided to make uh, her mental illness like a physical character, I knew that I would have to do a lot of work in terms of, okay, then how are they going to look and how are they going to act? Because then all of a sudden it's not just like a voice in your head because we do hear her as a voice in her head like throughout most of the film, but then she comes and shows her face a few times as well. Um, So one thing I did to kind of challenge myself was I reached out to uh, different friends and colleagues I knew who had all different types of conditions from autism to OCD to depression and just sort of asked them questions like um, how you manage your experience and how do you view your condition and like how would they appear to you kind of if they were a physical person and just kind of taking that into account and like figuring out where the similarities were. Um, and then also maybe what were some like interesting things, um, and relating that to my own experiences as well, just to like see commonalities to get kind of, uh, the well-rounded perspective, um, of what was going on because the separation, I think of Ava's character from her mental illness was extremely important because, um, so often when you have mentally ill characters, it's almost always in the context of anger or violence or something, but it's because there isn't a lot of separation. There just seems to, they seem to marry the person and the condition together. And that's always just kind of bothered me a little bit because sometimes it's within the context of, Oh, but they didn't ever like say, Oh, that wasn't me. That was, and I'm not saying of course that like when somebody has a condition like that gives you the right to treat people badly or however, but, um, just the creating the separation between uh, the per- who the person is in their condition. Like it's not the totality of their personality. It's just another part of who they are um, and it doesn't completely control them. Yeah, that's, that's great. And uh, Elliot, um, how, how did you bring this, this realness to the screen in the sense of playing a you know, queer woman who's, who's mentally ill? Like how did you bring you know, that to the screen, if that makes sense. Yeah, that certainly makes sense. And I think that the best way to access a character is to let that character flow through you and your real personhood, like with your body as your instrument. Like, um, the most truthful performance is going to come through you, through your body, literally through your mind, through your own experiences. So um, with Ava and I guess with, with every character, you know, I've ever played and probably will play, I find that commonality and no matter what it is, like it comes down to a base desire of some sort or a base fear because I think that with Ava it it came down to I guess if I had to put it into a phrase kind of like I can't show you this part of me you know um you being her partner Margot like, I can't show you this part of me. I'm afraid to show you this part of me. And just to think that phrase and even to say it out loud, it, it does something internally. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, that's, I mean, just the jumping off point. I think no matter if you've struggled with mental illness or if you're queer or not queer, if you've ever been afraid to to show yourself or been afraid to ask for help or have have been afraid to show yourself or ask for help from the one you love Mm -hmm. um then then that's the character then you're you're embodying it you're doing it Mm -hmm. um yeah. yeah that's great yeah that's that's really well put um yeah cause I mean I I mean even if you, if you don't have a mental illness, I feel like you could connect with Ava's character on the level that, you know, that, that 
you can't be vulnerable and real with people and, and, and like all the time or, or just, you know, you have certain sides of yourself that you just don't want to open up. And mm -hmm. I think in, a, in that sense, it's very universal, um, her character. Yeah. So I, yeah, I love that. Um, so I, I do want to talk about Ava uh, because the, the animated Ava, um, when we had done Elizabeth, when we had done the the you know the written interview, which you can find at cinemafem.com, um, you had talked about why you had Ava in that specific animated form with like no nose, no no mouth, like a circle head. So, I can you can you go into that um, you know again for everyone about about what made you choose that form for Ava? <laughs> That's a great question. So um, initially I was throwing around because um, I didn't actually come down to Ava's design until I had cast Elliot because I knew that it was going to have to hint at some aspect of their appearance. Like even though Ava was going to be very sort of undetailed because the idea from what I was thinking was, okay, so we have this colorful, expansive world that is supposed to be her mind. So it's sort of her mind is speaking for her. So then how would she look kind of inside her own mind if it was just kind of her voice and just kind of uh, putting a figure to that voice was thinking, okay, so if say she is this complete flesh and blood person in the physical world, in the abstract world, she would probably, if like everything else is a reflection of who she is, then she would appear to the audience as something kind of basic. And I don't like to say monochrome, but she is black and gray in the film. And like, that was a reflection, not only of sort of the depressive side, but also how uh, things are being sucked out of her sort of. And uh, the gray felt that she has as an outfit also kind of uh, is hinted at like later in the film when like she's wearing gray and uh, when we see her for the first time, um, because um, I knew that if we were introduced to Elliot's character in the flesh, like on the outset, then it would also translate a lot more easily when we saw her in that animated form because she's doesn't, she no longer has a mouth. She doesn't blink like there, she doesn't have uh, fingers. So there's like it, I think um, the personalization of the character that Elliot was bringing in the beginning of the film. And then just throughout the film was just very important to sort of fleshing out such a basic form that we see her in when she's animated. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, and then Elliot, we had talked about this uh, also during during our written interview, but but I, I loved how you talked about, you know, how how it was freeing to play a animated character, and I, I and that you were the emotions you could play them differently, and how you talked. Can you can you go into that? Yeah, um, I guess for. Um... For everyone who who doesn't know, um, we we acted out the entire film, um, even the parts where um, it is cute little animated Ava. Um, I still went through the 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 motions and the emotional journey of the character, and I mean it it was such a joy as an actor because you know I I didn't have to worry if. I blink weird or if I make a weird face in the middle of the scene or something like I it um like I was I was there to in, to inspire the animation and of course also like lend my voice to the character and it was so freeing to be as big as possible with my gestures because you know then Ava would move her little arms to 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 match what I had just done probably or like to to be very expressive vocally um, because that's that's something that in in film acting that can be kind of a little it, it it's just like it, it, it's it's not something you you do so much it, it it's like a very stagey thing to be super expressive with your voice and to use your voice as an instrument in that way it it was so fun to do and and to act in that way 
allows the emotions to flow so much easier um, because you're allowing every motion to be huge. And I think also because there isn't that pressure of the cameras on me right now. And if I start to cry right now, I'll make an ugly face or something <laughs> like that, you know? Um, but it, it was a, it, it was a great time. I, I'm incredibly thankful for the work that we did. Yeah. Oh, you guys, you guys are great. I, I, I love this film. Um, and I, so I, I, I rewatched the, the film today on a big, bigger screen, actually, this, this screen back here. And I, I saw these little details that I missed on the small screen, um, you know, particularly when we're, I think it's in the Barbies like area and then maybe in the, in the memory kit, um, just these, all these different like pictures, like all this nostalgia really like, you know, like the hot guys back then and, you know, the things you would put on your wall. I mean, that's what I did when I was like 13. I would just cut out like Leonardo DiCaprio, which that might date me a bit, but, you know, it's it's just all these little pieces of, of you know, nostalgia. Anyway, so I wanted, I wanted to talk to both of you about the nostalgia aspect of the film and how that kind of fed into uh, Ava's character character and journey. Um, Elizabeth, can you can you talk about that a little bit first? Yes, so um, definitely I was excited to uh, first of all explore a lot of the textures and like bright colors that I would remember seeing as a younger kid um, because relating it back to uh, Ava's struggle of kind of using the box as a crutch because she sees it as sort of an encapsulation of when she didn't have to deal with her condition. And then her younger self just kind of comes to her and uh, just uh, narrates the fact that, well, I mean, you don't have to look back into the past as to when you thought it was okay. Like you can also make the point of doing the work to be okay now instead of um, always just looking to go back sort of to the box, quote unquote. And not say it's a bad thing. I mean, there were definitely, I know, uh, little moments that I didn't, I think, initially notice too until I reviewed some of the footage with Elliot's performance, like just how that also came into play. Like the part where uh, she wakes up and then you see the shattered mirror and Margot comes over. And then like one of the first things she does is that she like takes the box and she like pushes it away before she like hugs Margot. So that was a sort of very poignant, poignant uh, moment for me, like rewatching that. Cause I hadn't noticed that initially when we were on set and I was like, Oh yes, that's so great. And um, then also, uh, cause I mean, I never, the box is a caboodle from the nineties, but I never had, and even though I never had one, I just loved just the aesthetic of it and uh, thought it worked really great and just filled it with all these little things. And um, uh, it was really fun to just be able to like put in these tiny little Easter eggs, like you said, for people to find later. And like, uh, I, I actually put in like more for the, when I first showed the film, but we had to like, just cut it down for like some of the festival cuts and also like some copyright things. But um, yeah, I definitely took some enjoyment in trying to see if people were going to be like, Oh, I recognize that. Or I know where that came from. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that's great. And Elliot, <clears throat> This is something we talked about briefly during the written interview, but you you had like kind of a what is it um, a breakthrough when when you were the the animated short uh, short action sorry not short wait how does it say I'm sorry I'm losing my words right now anyways the an animated form of Ava you like mm -hmm. woke up in the childhood bedroom and that was like really a uh, a, a moment for you. And I, I thought, can you share that with us? Yeah, I think that I, this also, I mean, ties into, you know, the little discussion you guys had with that question of nostalgia. I find nostalgia so absolutely debilitating. Um, I, I, I think it is, it is absolutely soul crushing. <laughs> um, Especially, I think, when you're in a dark place like Ava is, um, 
this 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 looking back and this nostalgia is is just this terrible yearning and this terrible grief um dad even just talking about it right now I'm getting kind of upset um like so you know Ava goes on this journey and it leads her to her childhood bedroom where she's able to speak um with the young version of herself and Uh I was crying everybody else was crying um just because I think that that is just I I don't know if it's maybe just me but you know when when, no I guess people say this when people are like oh what would you say to your younger self or how would you treat your younger self putting myself in the mind space to um help my younger self but also to look to her for guidance um was was a really healing moment for me personally, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, yeah, I, it, it is, it is true when you, you connect with, you know, things that are, I probably shouldn't go so much of my story, but, um, you know, when, when you're younger, sometimes you feel like you're invincible, like you feel like nothing can touch you and you just have this like spirit, like, you know, this, this childlike spirit that, you know, life is awesome and, you know, things are going to go great. And then, you know, when you're your adult self and all grumpy, you're like, oh, I used to be so hopeful back then. And it, it is a reawakening, you know, connecting to that, that younger self. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I love that, that aspect of the film. Um, yeah. And then this is a question I asked in the interview as well, but I love the answer that answers that I get. Um, and Elizabeth, we'll start with you. Um, what do you hope people see in your film? Well, uh, it's great you bring that up because I remember uh, when you had uh, made the promotional post uh, for this and the film, uh, you put in big, le- there were big letters, the quote, it's okay yeah. to not be okay. And I just mm-hmm. thought that was a great encapsulation of the film. So I'm so glad that that was up there. Um, so that was, I think, just the main takeaway of the film is uh, that it's not too late to reach out for help and that um, it shouldn't be looked at as, oh, I'm too old or like this is, I've quote unquote failed if uh, my condition has gone to this point. Um, I know that a great thing I like to refer to is uh, you have your condition and your condition doesn't have you, um, which is something I try to promote with the film too. So that's my main thing too. And also more stop motion. Yeah. (laughs) So Elliot? Um, I think Elizabeth really hits the nail on the head with it's okay not to be okay. Um, I think I, I perhaps, I guess just to add my own little bit, I might add to that and say, it's okay not to be okay. And the people who love you are there to help you. Mm-hmm. And cause I think though, though we see Ava, you know, literally battle, Parally, her illness on her own mm-hmm. she still gets there with the with the help of others even if they are figurative people that being the virtues and her younger self and and you know every person she meets along the way but and then of course you know in in the live action she has literally Margot, her love um but yeah the people who love you are there to help you mm-hmm. yeah that's that's great. It's a, it's a great message, and um, so I'm I'm just really excited about both of you and your careers and where where they're going to be headed. And um, yeah, sign me up, Elizabeth, for your next film because I just can't wait to see what you do next with stop motion. And honestly, like it's so um, like I I don't know a lot of female animators which is horrible because I have a women in film magazine but I maybe I just haven't interviewed enough animators so I'm curious what's next for you so yep (laughs) yeah uh, so I'm working on uh, a couple of things uh, developing uh, different mediums 
Uh, mostly I'm trying to write uh, a science fiction story and that's like kind of slow going because I procrastinate. But uh, in Better Who's, uh, I bought a uh, 1981 uh, Trinicon uh, video camera which um i because i just like had this random idea like one day like oh my gosh like what if there was like this um video diary made from a girl like in the 80s who like is questioning her sexuality and like what would that look like so i just kind of bought this uh 80s camera and i was thinking like where am i going to go with this so um i hope to develop that with a couple of my friends and like see what happens because things are opening back up again and it's getting warmer so hopefully things will start being filmed again yeah Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I wanted to add on that real quick. And then Elliot, I'm, I want to throw it to you. But um, like, I, you know, Pixar, like, yeah, it's great animation. But as far as I know, it's like all dudes behind it, which I'm probably wrong. I'd have to do some um, research on that. But I would love to see your version of Pixar. Like I would, lo- <laughs> I would love to like, have that a thing like like a female like animated like like stop motion I just so I don't know I'm excited I'm excited um Elliot you're doing amazing things this year I still need to see shoplifters of the world but I I've seen you seen you last night actually and mayor of east town and and uh you surprisingly came in on the movie um uh let's see here why am i blanking you uh, want me th- to say it things Everyone gets heard it things heard and seen i'm looking at your bio mm-hmm. right now um and i was just like what did i just miss something like is that elliot like and i had to like literally rewind and just like do a freeze frame and then i'm like yeah so anyways i'm excited to see what you're going to be doing with your acting uh anything you could share coming up um, Shoplifters of the World is releasing internationally, but it will be on DVD and Blu-ray um, in the U.S. on June 1st. Ah, um, nice. Okay. And, and then I'll say probably the next thing I'm doing is I'm competing as, um, as a screenwriter, I guess, in uh, the ATX Festival pitch competition. Nice. Um, a uh, a pilot that I wrote uh, with my sister Bridget, and we're really excited about that. That's great. That's great. And I I don't know. If this is something. I you probably don't mind. You're you're a triplet. I I just found that out as well, which I don't know anyone who's a triplet. So that's that's very cool. Um, yeah, yeah. So that, that's cool. You're doing something with your sister. That's awesome. Um, wait, was there anything else that you guys wanted to add about the film, like kind of the direction it's going in terms of festivals or anything, anything about, you know, mental health? Uh, any last thoughts? Yeah, so uh, we actually recently uh, became an award winner at the Imagine Rain Independent Film Festivals. We won Ooh. Best Student Short, and then I got an honorable mention for Best Female Director, so that was nice. Yeah, that's yes. great. So uh, we also, I also had a couple of festivals reach out to me directly. There was randomly, uh, which I thought was interesting, was this festival called uh, like Hollywood Bloody Horror Fest, because they're like, oh yeah, we love to have your film. And I'm like, uh, okay, it's not a horror movie, but all right. And then, so that was exciting. Uh, so yeah, we've uh, been just going through, uh, we, I uh, just uh, submitted to uh, Prague, Prague, I think, yeah, International Festival. So um, that's another one. So yeah, we're just uh, going through, we're going to be uh, pushing all the updates on our Instagram. So uh, yeah. That's awesome. Good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah. I'll say that, uh, that we're really excited about the conversations that we've been yes. having at these festivals. Um, I just the, the conversations that open up about mental illness are really oh, honest and vulnerable and beautiful. Um, and I just to think that something we've made can start a dialogue like that, mm-hmm. where like we're speaking openly with, you know, these these you know, older white guys who we feel like we don't have anything in common with. I mean, just, you know, just to name a demographic. Um, like it's it's just something really special and, and we're looking forward to um, 
to bring in this around and, and getting that dialogue started for sure. Oh, that's awesome. Well, this has been amazing guys. And Always. I'm just, I'm just so excited for people, you know, to watch this film. Um, so, and I'm excited to follow what you guys do next. And uh, yeah, thank, thank you for joining me. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Rebecca. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye.